This is Nick with LogosByNick.com and in today's tutorial I'll be demonstrating how you can create this simple text effect using Inkscape and at any point in this tutorial you could look down at the bottom left hand side of my screen to see which mouse clicks and keystrokes I'm using and in order to follow along with this tutorial you'll need to install a particular font that I'll have linked in the description of the video so go ahead and install that font before you open up Inkscape otherwise uh, it won't be registered in Inkscape you have to make sure you after you install the font, you pretty much have to restart Inkscape, otherwise it won't show up in your font directory if you have Inkscape running while you install it. So um, I'll minimize this, we'll get started here in Inkscape. And if you'd like to know how you can make Inkscape appear dark and with these custom icons, a link to that information will be in the description of the video. So the first thing we want to do is make sure we have the view set to custom, and then we'll zoom in at one to one. Then we'll open up the align and distribute menu with this button up top here. And we're going to want last selected uh, chosen from that drop down. And then we'll open up the edit objects, colors, gradients, and stroke menu with that button there. So the first thing we're going to do is create our text. And if you notice here, I just used the word Inkscape for this tutorial. So I'm just going to grab the text tool, click on the canvas to get the blinking cursor, and I'm just going to write Inkscape. And I'm going to change the font by clicking on the font button up here. If you can't find it, you just hit Control, Shift, and T. And there's your font uh, your font editor. And uh, I'm just going to click on one of these fonts here in the list and start typing in the name of the font, which is Sansita. So S-A-N-S-I. And there it is, Sansita 1. Go ahead and click Apply. Close out of that. And I want to space these letters out. So I'm going to come up here to where it says uh, spacing between letters and pixels. I'm just going to hold up on that arrow, space that out. We want to put a lot of space between them. Maybe about that much, that's pretty good. Now we'll go back to the Select tool. I'm just gonna hold Control and Shift and scale this up like that. And I'm gonna make this white, and it's gonna disappear. You're not gonna be able to see it, but that's all right, because now we're gonna duplicate it by hitting Control D, make another duplicate white copy. I'm gonna make this copy uh, blue, like I used here in the uh, thumbnail. I'll use like a, uh, a faded blue, somewhere, something like uh, this over here. Go ahead and click that. Pick your shade of blue. Now I'll go with something like that maybe. That's better. And then I want to give it an outline of the same shade. So I'm just going to hold shift and click on that shade again. And I'm going to lower that one step. Click the button that says lower selection one step. And it's going to go beneath the white copy. And then we'll come over here to the stroke style tab and change the width of this to something much bigger. Maybe like 12. Okay, maybe not that big. 8. Let's see how 8 looks. Okay, eight's pretty good. And we want to use a rounded join and a rounded cap. So go ahead and select that. And uh, I'm going to duplicate this again. I'm just going to hit Control D to duplicate that. And I'm going to come back over here. And um, for this one, I'll make this red for now. I'm just going to turn this red and then I'll hold Shift and make it red to make the outline red as well. And I'll lower that to the bottom with this button here, lower selection to the bottom. And now we want to make this even bigger. So it should be at 8 or whatever it is. Whatever size it is you went with, just make it a little bigger. So I'll try 12. Okay, still not big enough. We'll go with maybe 14. Okay, we'll try uh, 16. And 16 looks pretty good. So once, once we have it set at a size that looks pretty good like that, we're going to change that to white. So we'll turn it white and then hold shift and click white again to give it a, to make the outline white. And we'll duplicate that by hitting control D. Make another copy, make the make the, uh, this copy black. And then hold shift and click on the color black to make it black again, make the outline black. And then we'll send this to the bottom. And what we want to do is this is going to act as the uh, the shadow, the drop shadow beneath each letter. So we, what we want to do is offset this a little bit. We want to bring it down and then over to the right a little bit in comparison to the rest of the letters. So I'm going to come up here to where it says Y on the Y axis. I'm just going to hold down this arrow to click that a few times to bring this down. And if you notice, it'll bring it down like that. And the same thing with the uh, X. I'm just going to click up to send that to the right a little bit. Maybe bring that down a little more. And you can just eyeball it, whatever you think looks good like um, something like that should be pretty good. And we're going to change the blur. We're going to give this a blur over here where it says blur. Just erase that and just type in 2. We're going to give it a 2 point blur. And um, uh, maybe not that much. I'll bring it down. Let me try 
All right, that's pretty good. And then the opacity, uh, we'll bring this down to maybe 90. That should be pretty good. And what we could do now is click and drag over the, uh, over the entire thing and go to Path, Object to Path. And then we can click the Ungroup button. And everything should ungroup into individual little letters. So what we want to do now is go and select each grouping of letters and group them together. So I'm going to start over here with the left. I'm going to click and drag over the letter E. And make sure you click and drag to select a big area because if you notice the drop shadow, it takes up, if you look at the outline of the drop shadow, it takes up a lot of space. So if like you don't click a big enough area, you're not going to grab the drop shadow. So make sure you click and drag a, as big of an area as you possibly can without going into the next letter. And once we have those selected, we'll group that together. Or you could just use the keyboard shortcut, which is Control G. And I'm going to do the same thing for the letter P. I'm going to group that together. I'm going to select that and group that together with Control G. And then I'm going to take this and raise it to the top with that button right here that says Raise Selection to the Top. Then I'll hold Control and just move this to the right. And I'm holding Control in order to lock it onto the, uh, the uh, horizontal axis. Because if I don't, it kind of goes like off axis like that. So. We just hold control and move this over to the right, like that. Bring that over. That looks pretty good. And we're going to do the same thing with the rest of these letters. Click and drag over the letter A. Group that together by hitting control G. Raise it to the top. And hold control and slide it over to the right. Same thing over here. Group it together. Raise it to the top. Hold control. Bring it over to the right. Do the same thing with the letter S. And I'm just going to go through and do these real quick to get this part out of the way. Put that over there. The letter N, bring that to the top. Over here. And one more. Group that together, bring it to the top, and bring it over here. And let me press 1 on the keyboard to zoom in to 100%. And there we have the letters pretty much set. And if you want, what you could do is you could select every other letter just to give it a little more character. You could select every other letter, like I'll grab the N and then I'll hold Shift and the S and the A and the P. And I'll hold Control and click and drag that up a little bit like that. Or maybe down a little bit like that. No, I think it looks better going up. You could do something like that just to make it, you know, give it a little bit of character, make it look different. And uh, if you notice here in the uh, thumbnail, I gave it a background, which you could do yourself if you'd like. You just grab the, um, the um, rectangle tool, which is over here. Click and drag over the graphic to put a rectangle around it. And uh, I'm going to get rid of that outline by holding shift and clicking the X. Bring the opacity up. Gra grab the select tool, send that to the bottom. Put this over here like this. I'm going to make this the same shade that that faded blue is. So I'm going to zoom in on that by holding control and rolling up the mouse wheel. And then I'll grab the dropper, which is right here, or just press F7 on the keyboard and click on that shade of blue like that. And that looks pretty good. I mean, I gave it, I gave it a little bit of a radial gradient in the thumbnail. If you'd like to do that, you can go to the Select tool and click on the, uh, the Fill tab and then just click on the button that says Radial Gradient. Then we can press G to get the gradient tool. Click on this stop right there and bring the opacity up. And then under the HSL tab, I'll take the L row and slide that to the left a little bit to make that a little darker. And I'll double click this line right here to put a new stop in there. I'll take that stop and I'll take the L row and slide that to the right a little bit to make that lighter. And then I'll take the middle stop and just slide that to the right to make that even lighter like that. And we'll go back to the select tool and click off of it to deselect. And that is pretty much it. That's how you can go about creating that text effect using Inkscape. So if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thank you for watching.